hitting a region of the ground the size of the center circle of a basketball court. It's gonna be like just some crazy plasma weapon. <laughs> Today we're looking at another heavily requested XKCD what if video. Specifically, what if all the lightning on Earth struck the same place at once? All the lightning. So, like all the strikes over the course of a year? Well, bolt of lightning is a billion joules, and that's conservative. And a billion lightning strikes a year, if you convert that to megatons, that's gonna get you well over 200. And the most powerful nuclear weapon is. 50, so we're talking quite a bit of energy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. This question comes from Trevor, who asks, if all the lightning that occurs worldwide on any given day all struck in the same place at once, what would happen to that place? Okay, so we're scaling it down to a day. So dividing that number I just said by 365, you're gonna get 650 or so kilotons. So not nearly as crazy, but we're still talking well above the average nuclear weapon in terms of yield. Now, big asterisk there though, because lightning isn't very predictable. So when I said a billion joules or a gigajoule, that's, that's a rough and conservative average. You can have some really big lightning, upwards of 10 billion joules, or you can have some really tiny lightning, um, of less than 100 million joules. So it depends. And keep in mind, sources do vary a bit. I've seen some that claim the average of 7 gigajoules, 3 gigajoules, 5 gigajoules. I'm just going to assume 1, mainly because that's an easier number to work with, but lightning could get can get pretty strong, a lot stronger than that. They say lightning never strikes in the same place twice. I've heard that saying. I do not know where that comes from. If that was the case, any sort of device that, that protects you from lightning, such as a lightning rod, a grounding grid, or a surge arrestor, could be single use and you'd be fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are places of the world where lightning strikes the same spot pretty regularly. I have no idea where this came from. They are wrong. And it's a little surprising that this saying has survived. Yeah. I think people who believed it would have been gradually filtered out. People often wonder whether we could harvest electrical power. Lightning, I guess lightning doesn't strike, strike enough in the same spot to take all those people out of the gene pool. <laughs> Power from lightning. On the face of it, it makes sense. After all, lightning is electricity, and lightning strikes seem pretty powerful. The problem is, a lightning strike is over so fast that the total amount of energy delivered isn't that extreme, and in any case, it's very hard to get lightning to strike where you want it. Yes, so lightning lasts on the order of microseconds. So you can get some pretty extreme power levels, but it's not sustainable. Can't imagine trying to use it as a power source. Silliness. So neglecting that Doc Brown would have been electrocuted and I highly doubt those cables were rated for 300 million volts and 30,000 amps. You could get 1.21 gigawatts, as they say, in Back to the Future, keeping in mind it's actually pronounced gigawatt, but it's over such a short period of time using it as that way in a power plant, no. Though keep in mind that nuclear power plants in the reactor the plant I worked at was close to 4 gigawatts and that's constantly over the course of 18 to 24 months which still translated to about 1.4 gigawatts or 1400 megawatts going onto the grid from the main turbine. So it's a bit of a weird thing when you can talk about how much power something produces but if it's not sustained it doesn't really mean anything like you can have pulse laser tattoo removers that are technically in the megawatt range but it's just emitting that laser pulse over such a short period of time not exactly an impressive showing for something that's in the megawatt range but you can get to megawatts by dividing by a really small number. A typical lightning strike delivers enough energy to power a residential house for about two days. Okay, and I can even see his notes saying it uses far more. 
energy, but a lot of it does go away by the time it reaches the ground. That's, that's also true. So two days. Okay, so the no number he's using is only about 200 to 300 million joules. Because we're talking 30 to 40 kilowatt hours per day, the conversion for kilowatt hours to joules is 3.6 million. That means that even the Empire State Building, which is struck by lightning about 100 times a year, wouldn't be able to keep a house running on lightning power alone. <laughs> Yeah, lightning isn't very energy dense. It's impressive looking, but it doesn't it doesn't last very long. Even solar power has such a major leg up on it because the sun is at least constant, or wind power for that matter. Because while it's not as impressive as lightning, lightning certainly looks a lot cooler. The sun shines a lot longer and the wind blows a lot longer. So even more mundane, ordinary things like that could give you a lot more energy. And of course, nuclear power produces so much more energy than wind and solar, and from a much smaller power source. Even in regions of the world with a lot of lightning, such as Florida and the Eastern Congo rainforest, the power delivered to the ground- I actually didn't realize Florida had a lot more lightning than average. That's, that's good to know. By sunlight outweighs the power delivered by lightning by a factor of a million. There you go. <laughs> I like how we kind of agree on a lot of things because, yeah, you're, you're going to get a lot more from your solar panels, lest your solar substation get struck by lightning, but hopefully they have a lot of uh, lightning protection systems that you would in any, in any substation or power generation site like a nuclear power plant. In case you're wondering how a nuclear power plant protects itself from lightning, well, um, first off, the buildings are heavily reinforced. The reactor containment building, for one, as well as the control room building, which is not in the containment building. It's actually in an auxiliary building to the side, known as the electrical auxiliary building, made out of reinforced concrete and steel. So that'll protect you from lightning, among other natural phenomena, such as high wind, flooding, earthquakes, a lot of things. They also do have lightning rods installed at the top of these structures, which are connected and conductive pathways that essentially channel all of that energy down to the ground and there are grounding grids installed around the plant just conductive materials buried down in the ground to ensure it's dispersed safely into the earth and just about every structure is grounded not only from lightning but just any sort of power surge i mean we're de dealing with high voltage electricity so surge arresters and suppressors protect against any kind of voltage spike, include, including the spikes of voltage you get from lightning. And there's protective relays in just about every electrical component for overcurrent, overvoltage, and undercurrent and undervoltage for that matter, among just about every type of lockout device there is. There's nuclear power plants invest a lot in their electrical protection. And if you do lose something, the electrical plant is set up that you don't lose large chunks of it at once, but even if you did, even if you lost the entire grid, there are backup diesel generators that can provide emergency power and uninterruptible power supplies. And keep in mind, these diesels, at least the safety-related ones, are actually located inside of structures. The uh, diesel generator building is also a reinforced concrete structure, so the diesel itself isn't going to get struck by lightning. Not to mention, we have weather towers, meteorological towers that can be used to predict where the severe weather and the lightning strikes are coming in, so the plant can initiate, plant operators can initiate protective actions, and the main thing that is initiated during a lightning proximity breach is about protecting the plant operators and maintenance technicians, having everybody on outside elevated structures and confined spaces um, evacuate those areas until they're given a lightning all clear. Plant and its safety systems are so robust compared to other natural phenomena such as earthquakes. Lightning isn't going to do a lot to the plant. To put it this way, all of our lightning procedures are all about protecting people in vulnerable areas, not so much about protecting the plant. It's more of if the lightning gets bad enough that you lose the grid, you initiate your response to loss of off-site power procedures where you ensure the reactor safely shut down and everything is being carried by the emergency diesel generators. This makes sense because ultimately lightning is powered by sunlight. Generating power from lightning is kind of like building a wind turbine powered by tornado. Lightning powered by sunlight. I suppose indirectly. I mean, you're talking about the sun influences the weather patterns on Earth. Solar heating heats the Earth's surface, forms convection currents, updrafts, 
thunderstorms and then yeah <laughs> here you have it guess i never thought of it that way it's impractical <laughs> that is pretty silly yeah so to only have a power source that that relies on the extreme version of something rather than just the normal sustainable boring version of something but yeah in this in this example uh solar and wind turbines are are the boring but practical solution rather than the tornado exclusive turbine that would require wind speeds of over 70 meters per second to even <laughs> be relevant. Whereas wind turbines typically stop functioning. When cutout speeds for wind turbines where they stop producing electricity are well below 40 meters per second. <laughs> also tornado food. What is that? Mobile homes? Although that would also be very cool. In Trevor's scenario, all the lightning hits the world in one place. That would make power generation a lot more attractive. By happen in the same place, let's assume that the lightning bolts all come down in parallel right up against each other. Wow. <laughs> the main channel of a lightning bolt, the part that's actually carrying current, is about a centimeter or two in diameter. Our bundle contains about a million separate bolts, which means it'll be about six meters in diameter. So I guess he's being a little conservative since it was a billion a year, so we're cutting down to a day. So he's dividing by by a thousand rather than 365. Okay. Hitting a region of the ground the size of the center circle of a basketball court. It's gonna be like just some crazy plasma weapon. <laughs> Every science writer always compares everything to the oh, atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Which I don't even know why. It's, it's, it's crazy because it's coming up on 80 years and modern nuclear weapons are a little different. But I guess that's left such an impact that people like to use that as a method of comparison. So we may as well get that out of the way. The lightning bolt would deliver about two atomic bombs worth of energy to the air and ground. Okay, so two atomic... That's... That's small, because that's, that's only 32 kilotons. Then again, he's he's actually being conservative because he's only saying a million volts, and he also used the 200 to 300 million joules per bolt. So I can see how he's getting a smaller number than the 600-ish kilotons going with the average numbers. Though... He's talking about hitting the ground and a lot of the energy and he's talking about the energy being dissipated. So really at the top of that you're is where you're going to get your your 600 kilotons of lightning plasma energy. <laughs> Keep in mind he's talking this is a very conservative estimate that he is saying and there are bolts of lightning that are a lot stronger than this, so if you want to get the full range, this is close to the low limit, and the upper limit will, even if you scale it just to a day, can probably get you into the megaton range. So there's quite a wide range here because lightning is so weird and varied. From a more practical standpoint, this is enough energy to power a game console and TV for several million years. <laughs> oh, that's a Nintendo 64. I wonder if he's playing um, Ocarina of Time. In that case, the real question is, how many times would you have to play the Song of Storms to generate this much lightning in one location? I mean, hey, in that game, the Song of Storms was formed by a time paradox, so creating massive directed energy plasma weaponry should be comparatively easy, right? Or to put it another way, it could support the U.S.'s electricity consumption for five minutes. See, that's the other thing. Uses a lot of energy, but all the lightning in the world for a day, translating to five minutes for just one country. Not a very efficient way to generate electricity. Let's stick with nuclear power plants as part of a complete, you know, well-balanced energy portfolio. I'm biased, of course. In case you're wondering how much energy that is, the U.S. uses about 1.3 million megawatts or about a thousand nuclear power plants worth if you're just sticking with about 1.3 million megawatts or about a thousand nuclear power plants if you were to have the entire U.S. run on nuclear power. That's about how many it would take. As of now, the U.S. has just under a hundred nuclear power plants or nu nuclear reactors. Some power plants have more than one reactor. The bolt itself would only be as narrow as the center circle of a basketball court, but it would leave a crater the size of the entire court. Inside the channel, the air- Keep in mind, these are all low ball estimates. 
Yeah, it'll do a lot more than a than just a basketball court. Would turn to high energy plasma. The light and heat from the bolt would spontaneously ignite surfaces yep. for miles around. The shockwave would flatten trees and demolish buildings. All in all, the Hiroshima comparison isn't far off. Yep, that's a lot of plasma, air ionization, and if it's the bigger one of this, yeah, several kilometers would be affected. There would also be an EMP. Now, not each individual bolt will cause an EMP, but enough of them from thunderstorms could cause an EMP shock, especially if it's concentrated like this. So it could disrupt electronics, power grids, especially since it's, it's a bolt, it's going all the way up into the atmosphere it's going to have a more widespread effect than this than this concentrated hit like this. Oh, and lightning does generate radiation, too. Now, at ground level, even concentrated, we're not talking about the levels from an atomic bomb. It's going to be a pretty wide spectrum. Obviously, the visible light, the visible radiation that you can see, radio waves, UVs, but even some high-energy gammas and x-rays. Though there, keep in mind, everything is really quick flashes just like the nature of the visible part of the lightning strike. It's a quick flash and you'll see it in the upper clouds of a thunderstorm. You might hope you could collect the energy of the bolt using a lightning rod. The mechanism by which lightning rods work is actually disputed. The traditional idea is that they provide a channel to divert current directly to the ground. Well, some people claim- That's what I was taught, okay? that they actually ward off lightning strikes by steadily transferring charge from the ground to the air. Huh. I haven't heard the one of it spitting out positive charges like that. But, yeah, you place it on the highest point, it concentrates it in, and it safely conducts it down the building all the way down to the ground, and the energy is dispersed into the earth. But, hey, if there's another theory out there, I know a lot of stuff about lightning, we... We just don't know as much about hence probably the high energy bands that are quite unpredictable so i fully welcome being wrong about this lowering the cloud to ground voltage difference and reducing the probability of a strike hmm. either way a lightning rod wouldn't keep you safe from trevor's lightning <laughs> a copper cable a meter in diameter could in theory conduct the brief surge of current from the bolt oh that's cool <laughs> without melting, but unfortunately, whatever's at the other end of this cable probably wouldn't conduct electricity nearly as well. And It's just too much energy in one concentrated area is the thing, and yeah, good luck having one meter long cables going like super, super far down. An explosion would disintegrate everything nearby all the same. Collecting all the world's lightning into one place is obviously impractical, but what about gathering all the lightning from just one area? No place on Earth has okay. constant lightning, but there is an area in Venezuela which comes close. Near the southwestern edge of Lake Maracaibo, there's a strange phenomenon, perpetual nighttime thunderstorms. The I've heard of these, I wasn't sure where they were, but yeah, that's one quick way to disprove the whole lightning never striking the same place twice. It's like, well, just go over here and take a look. There are two spots, one over the lake and one over the land to the west, where thunderstorms form almost every night. These storms can generate a flash of lightning every two seconds, <laughs> making Lake Maracaibo the lightning capital of the world. If you somehow manage to channel all the bolts from a single night of Catatumbo thunderstorms down through a single lightning rod and used it to charge a massive capacitor, it would store up enough power to run a game console and TV for roughly a century. There you go. Maybe some, maybe someone did the thing where they just played the Song of Storms over there and plugged it in so they could continue to play Ocarina of Time. <laughs> If this happened, we'd probably need to revise the old saying to something like, lightning always strikes in the same place. That place is in Venezuela. <laughs> you shouldn't stand there. That's funny. This was a really cool one. I, uh, I always love these crazy scenarios and how you can use some elements of real physics to talk about it as far as how you'd get the lightning there and move like all the world's clouds into one spot. Not sure, but... I like that there's a good balance between science and suspension of disbelief in these scenarios. I can see why it's so popular and, and entertaining. Thanks again for the recommendation, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.